Hi, I'm Carol Ann Weaver of Body and Soul Companion, and you are in Discernment and Decision Making, the Ignatian Way. And we've looked at our history, we've looked at spiritual freedom, letting go of inordinate attachments, open hand, drilling down to our deepest desires. Yesterday, we were talking about gathering all the relevant information. And so for the next seven days, we're going to do seven different ways of discerning. And today is going to be through your memory, but we're going to look at your intuition, your body through nature, um, through feelings. We're going to look at seven different ways of discernment through different avenues and it's Ignatius was far ahead of his time he was into paying attention to your emotions understanding will all those things so today is about memory and I will be using the guide with uh, the, um, from the way of discernment and I'll put the book in the description so I invite you to close your eyes to breathe slowly. And bring your whole self to God. Body, mind, emotions, soul. Find that comfortable position for your body. Let the chair support you. And with each exhale, relax your feet, your legs, your seat and lower back in the chair. Your, to your mid back, your upper back, your shoulders, your arms and hands. And up your front, your stomach, abdomen, your chest, breathing fully into your ribs and exhaling fully out. Pectoral region in the front where your shoulders are. Just relaxing those muscles, often tense when you're sitting a lot. In your neck. your face, your whole body, and then bringing your mind to God, just we're going to be going back in memory, so if there's something that's occupying your mind, freeing it up by giving whatever is occupying your mind over to the Lord so your, your focus can be on Him.
and then finally receiving God's loving gaze on you. As you look at him, he's looking at you with love. As we look at discernment through our memory, I'll read a short little paragraph on that. Our memories preserve, along with many other things, a personalized record of moments in which God has blessed, supported, and guided us throughout our whole lives. This prayer opens us to recall one or more moments of God's support and guidance related to the decision we have before him. The connection between then and now could be really subtle and require some pondering, but I will guide you through that process. Lord, we thank you that you live in us, you live and move. Holy Spirit, thank you that we know that you're sent as a helper and advocate. And thank you, Jesus, that we have been crucified with you and it's no longer we who live, but you who lives in us. Thank you, God, that you have been with us throughout our lives, and we seek the desire, um, we seek the grace to know um, from past experience and memories of decisions we've made in the past, Lord, and Lord, we desire that those would help us with the decision we're making for our future. Lord, would you speak to us through our memories? So I want you to think of the decision you are making. I have a decision I'm making you to present again, present that question to God. Lord, would you bring to our minds a memory just whatever comes to mind it may seem like it doesn't connect but I'm going to give you a little bit of time including time for myself to let a memory surface So now if an event or a period of your life comes to mind, relive that in your mind.
And I want you to see, hear, touch, taste, smell that memory that comes to mind. And how do you feel as you relive that memory? Think about where God was in that memory. Do you remember how you experienced God's presence in it? And how did you respond to God being in that moment? And remember the grace of that moment. What graces did you receive? And that might be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What were the grace or graces you received in that moment? And Lord, what are you trying to impress upon our hearts from that moment? Just take some time to listen to what God has to say. And even why he brought that memory up. So write down just the gist of that memory in your discernment journal. So I'm going to do that right now. You can do that. I'm going to pause the video to give you some time to do that. And I'll come back and you can pause it for yourself too. So... I just unpaused the video. It took some time for me to write down my memory and what God impressed on me. So now the next step is to notice the similarities and, and contrasts between that memory experience then and the issue you're bringing for discernment. So record those in your journal. I'm going to pause the video again. So hopefully you've um, seen the similarities and contrasts. And I will use my example. <clears throat> so what, maybe I'll close out the time in prayer and then I'll, you can turn it off. You don't have to listen to my example. God... Um, what a beautiful thing to relive those moments where you were just there and present and a decision that was made, a memory of a decision that was made for me, at least I, I think for where it was a good decision. So thank you, God, that you're there to guide and lead us and that that you're constantly with us and you're holding our hands in our decisions. 
So, Lord, I just pray a blessing upon the person that's watching this, God, that, that there would be this overwhelming sense of your presence in you holding them in the palm of your hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, so you can turn off the video if you want. Discernment through memory. The memory that God gave me is, an, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, this memory came up again, is I had three weeks to prepare for um, a prerequisite of taking prospectus on the World Christian Movement is 1986. And I I did it. And and um, everybody else wasn't prepared. I was the only one prepared. I don't, again, I'm not trying to brag about that, but it comes down to that deep desire that I would be thorough and a dedicated person. So that was the memory, but I relive the memory because I specifically remember being in my mother's, um, this 1986, no, 87, I traveled on New Year's Day, so it was um, 87, and I had my training for going to Bangkok, Thailand was in three weeks. It was the end of January. So I would take every day, I would go into my mother's dining room and across the, we were up on top of a hill and across the road was a vineyard they had built. And uh, I was just looking out over the vineyard and the sun was shining and I just loved the material of perspectives on the World Christian Movement. And actually, the person who edited the book was the person who was leading the, the, the team to Bangkok, Thailand. So anyway, it was one of those times very similar to the decision I'm making now where, where it was a short amount of time and I had a lot of work to do. And so this class I am thinking of taking is 10 weeks and I have to have eight hours of direction added to my already busy schedule. So what God impressed upon my heart um, was that, that decision, which was kind of a last minute hurried decision with a lot of content that needed to be covered in a short amount of time, bore fruit. And I think about the vineyards across the road. It bore fruit for my life in terms of relationships because those relationships from that team are still dear close friends today. I do direction with the wife of one of the people on that team. Um, just yes, totally. Um, when you spend four and a half months day in and day out with people, you become very close very quickly. So it bore the fruit of relationships and including the relationship with my husband. He ended up not going on that trip, but because he had not decided yet, my going on the trip was contingent on his going. So I kept calling him to ask him. He didn't know that, but I got to know my husband through me saying yes to that last minute decision and then it set a course for the direction of my life uh, for um, international work and I've learned so much um, I learned so much from that course perspectives on the world Christian movement that um, were have helped me for future ministry so I did similarities and contrast the similarity it was a hurried time-consuming thing, but the contrast is I had just quit my job and I was at my mother's home so I didn't have relationships, social engagements, and that's I focused on just that for three weeks. Um, um, similarity, fruit, I do believe what I will learn in this class will be fruitful and I will use it, but the contrast is um, spiritual direction with children is not necessarily my calling. 
supervision of people who do that and casting it. My calling is casting vision for that and um, being a leader in that and supervising people who do, but no, I don't necessarily, but actually I don't know because I've never done, I've never done direction with children. I just have children and I loved homeschooling. So anyway, and then um, the similarity is a, a great teacher. Steve Hawthorne was my teacher for that, that trip. And the teacher for this would be a wonderful woman named Lacey Finn Bor Borgo. If you ever want to do a spiritual direction with children, she is the woman to ask. So and I didn't really have a contrast with that um, because I love great teachers and I do know that I love to learn. And in going through that again and meditating on that, God reminded me of another memory where it was the last minute and I joined a cohort. I'd already been trained in spiritual direction um, from a nun, but God at the last minute just said, why don't you try um, going to this cohort? And it was already a closed cohort and um, it was a Protestant version of, of it, sustainable faith. And so I just, I felt like God was telling me to do it. And again, it was, okay, it's about three weeks before <laughs> same thing. So I had all this reading to prepare and same thing. Everybody else in the group had signed up way before I did. I signed up, I was the last person to sign up and I was the only person that came. <laughs> with everything done. So I think what that tells me is I probably can handle it. I, I I think I'm afraid I'm not going to be a a very thorough and dedicated person. I don't think I'm going to like be super stressed out having two new directees. So anyway, that is, I just added that on just to, it's great to verbalize it. And, oh, and I've said this before in previous videos, like I'm doing it to a camera and I'm doing it to you, but to verbalize it out loud is, is very helpful. It's brain science. It's, it's how our brains operate. So just read what you just did um, in what you just wrote in your journal to someone you trust, even your spiritual director. So discerning through memory. I hope you enjoyed that process. I sure did. Be blessed.